Hello fellow skater farmers and welcome to our first guide on skater farming. Today we are delving into the nitty gritty details that haven't been explored in any other video out there. So stick around as we unveil secrets and strategies that are sure to elevate your farming game with our final method getting you up to 60 spawns per hour if you have good internet connection. Okay, so what is a scaper? A scaper is a 10 segment long worm mob that spawns in the crystal hollows and it has defaultly a 1 out of 600 chance to spawn when breaking hearthstone. You can buff this to 1 out of 540 if you have the treasure of the earth perk. Whenever you spawn a scaper, you have a countdown of 30 seconds until you can spawn another worm or scaper. This also applies to worm spawns, obviously. So why would you want to kill scafers? There is something profitable about it, and that's obviously the scaper pet. There's a 0.24 chance to drop a rare scaper pet, a 0.12% chance to drop an epic scaper pet, and a 0.04% chance to drop a legendary scaper pet. These pets go for a lot of money in the auction house. Scaper farming is also pretty semi afk -able. Which makes it a great method to grind while watching TV or whatever. Netflix and chill with your not existing girlfriend because you play Hypixel <laughs> Skyblock and are a loser. Yo, that's too far, bro. That's too far, man. First of all, we have to clear up some basic information. The equation for the chance of dropping a pet is 1 plus magic find plus pet luck divided by 100. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you have more pet luck or more magic find, since they are valued the same. This only starts to matter, however, when you use superior armor or clever helmets. We are going to use the term effective magic find or EMF to refer to magic find plus pet luck. Another thing to notice is that pet luck does not increase the rarity of the pet dropped. As far as we know, looting does also not account for a higher drop chance. We have run some tests ourselves, killing a bunch of endermen and came to the conclusion that looting most likely does not work on pet drops. However, looting does still affect the drop chance for gemstones. Therefore, you would still want it for a max setup. Let's cover the best setup for max magic fund and pet luck. Let's start with the armor. There exists the obvious option, which is sorrow armor. But there is also superior armor. Or you can use any crimson armor with the magic find attribute. Or for the very very rich people, you can also use clever helmet. Make sure to report your armor to renown for the extra 1% stats. Next up, let's cover pets. There are again a few options. We have g drag obviously. We also have the black cat pet. The bar pet, which boosts your stats by 15%. And then we have some budget pets, Griffin for example, Endermite, Megalodon, Mithric Golem, e -Drag is also an option if you don't have anything else. The best pet item is Minus Relic, it gives 33% to all stats, that includes Magic Find and Pet Luck. Budget option is Clover Core, which gives 7 Magic Find, and if you use Griffin Pet for whatever reason, you can also use or Eyed Fish which costs roughly 200 million coins, so I don't know why you would do that, but you do you, I guess. Okay, let's cover the best weapons. We have a few options as well here. We have the obvious one, the Dillus Axe. Then we also have any any fishing rod reforged to Lucky, preferably a high tier one. And we also have, and please don't forget this important piece of information, the Blaze Daggers reforged to the Cold Fuse reforged. We also have enchantments for the weapons. The obvious ones are Chimera 5, Divine Gift, but you, as we said, also want to have looting for a max setup because you do get more gemstone drops and those make some money as well. I will now cover equipment. Again, several options here. We have Molten Equipment with the Magic Fund attribute. You do need a Kuda Tier 5 completion, otherwise the stats don't get applied. We have Rift Necklace. If you have all time charms, all seven ones, you get seven Magic Fund from Rift Blackness. If you want an alternative, however, and do not want to play Rift for reasons, you can also use Delirium Necklace. There also exists Blaze Cloaks. And for the Reforge, since we're mining, you obviously do want Glistening for the extra mining fortune. Accessories are also very important. There are a few ones. Those are Pulse Ring, which gives one Magic Find. J-Cubist Register, which gives one Pet Luck. 
Crab Head, which also gives one magic find. You don't need both editions of the Crab Head, only one of the two editions counts. And the obvious thing, you want to enrich all your accessories to magic find and get as many as you can on Legendary or Mythic. There are not too many options for Mayas that help for scale for farming. We have Diana, which gives 25 pet luck. Then we have Jerry, who does increase your stats by 10%. That applies to magic fun and pet luck as well. Yeah, that's basically it. So the best combination for Mayas would be Jerry with the Diana perks as well. It's worth to note that Arthrox does not improve your chances to drop a pet, since it only applies to Slayer drops. Let's cover basically everything else you can do to increase your magic find. We have the God Pod, we have the Booster Cookie, we have Beast Cherry, your Pet Score, the Beacon, preferably with the Scorched Power Crystals, the Pet Luck and the Magic Find Cakes. With a float 2718 today for free one magic find and one pet luck, you can click my cakes, do my maze, give me social XP and your money. Thank you for your business. And also, one last thing a lot of people forget about is the Necron Slatter, which can potentially also give you one magic find if you drop four handles. Also, don't forget to buy the Treasure of the Earth perk for 10% higher chance to spawn worms in Breaking House Stone. Let's cover the mining equipment. For most passive income, we want as high mining fortune speed and pristine as we can get. Also make sure to reach 1.5k mining speed to insta break hearthstone. The best mining armor is gonna be Divan's armor. Sorrow armor is also fine with fewer mining stats, but without the hustle to switch armor every skater spawn. Yog armor would also work while floor farming since it gives you immunity to heat, though it's only worth it if you can't afford a ball pet. The breaking tools are Divan's drill of course as the best in slot, followed by the lower tier drills. The gemstone gauntlet is the tool I use, it has a bit less stats but you won't have to refill your fuel and it's also way cheaper overall than most of the good other drills. Budget option would be the Piconimbus which breaks after 5000 blocks so it's really not recommended to use. For the pet we have the Baal pet which gives immunity to heat and also a 15% stat bonus if you mine in the magma fields. Skater is not recommended as it overrides mole. The pet item you want is the quick claw giving you stats based on your mining level and as a budget option the bejeweled color. Okay, let's talk about the optimal heart of the mountain tree. The heart of the mountain level we recommend is at least 6 because you unlock the gauntlet. However, you only need the heart of the mountain tree to enter the crystal hollow. Basically, you use a normal heart of the mountain tree. Picture is right here. Tada! And the only things that cause big controversies are mole and efficient miner. If you want to floor mine, just use efficient miner, you get more money. We did some tests with it, it did not influence the spawn rates at any point, we just got a little more money. However, if you wall mine, I would not recommend using efficient miner, since it will break some ore blocks below you. And let's talk about a very big thing. Many people for some reason think mole is bad for scale farming, it's actually the opposite. This is because mole has different patterns, but if you mine towards west, you will get a mole pattern that builds basically another tunnel for you, so you have two times the spawn chance and yeah. Let's talk about the actual methods. I will now show you the path I usually take to wall mining, which is the first method. You wanna warp to the crystal nucleus with slash warp cn, then go towards mithril deposits and follow exactly where I'm going. Dig into this wall and down a bit till you reach this walkway. It's gonna be there in every single lobby. And right before this entrance, dig towards plus X till you reach the wall. Turn left and reach the corner. In the corner, activate your mining speed boost so you can dig down faster till you reach Y at 62. From here on, you wanna go in a straight line looking at this angle. It's pretty forgiving, just make sure your cursor is on the bedrock wall right around the edge of this block. If you spawn a skater, make sure to swap your armor to Sorrow, switch to your axe and kill the skater. Try to not move your mouse as you do so. 
hitting the end, you wanna turn around and ether warp all the way back. I recommend using high intelligence power so you don't run out. Then dig down three blocks and continue. The second method will be floor farming. Make sure to equip some sort of heat protection such as the ball pad or yog armor. I don't have a specific path for this. Just reach Y31 and do the same thing, but with the angle being exactly 90, so you keep moving in a straight line. While floor mining, you can occasionally encounter structures, which makes it a bit less efficient than wall mining in my opinion. But since you can use efficient miner, you will make a bit more passive income, so pick your poison. Hitting the end, turn around and walk back. Our most favorite method is actually a secret method we haven't revealed yet and it involves loot share. We have tried this for hours on end and everything we have dropped so far is one pet that Flo has violently taken from my scather, sadly without loot share though. So for this to work you just dig one tunnel for your friend, one, two, three, four blocks in between, dig the next tunnel, make sure to line up correctly and then start mining. You will probably need to be in a call together because coordinating scatter spawns might be pretty hard. Once the scatter spawns, you need to quickly hit it five times and let the other one hit it five times right after and you should get a loot share message. The best armor as of right now is three solar pieces and clover helmet. If the primal dragon update releases, primal dragon armor will be better as it yields around 11 magic hunt per piece if you have 10,000 dragon kills and you beast sharing. If you only have full sorrow, superior outclass of sorrow at around 416 EMF without wearing armor. For the pet, theoretically best is G-Drag with Wumbel Cold Collection. If you don't have Wumbel Cold Collection or don't have Clever Helmet, use Black Hat. And if Primal Dragon releases, use Black Hat as well. Use Molten Equipment with Magic Hunt 10. Use a Diddlos Axe with Chimera 5, Divine Gift 3, Looting 5 from Gemstones. Also get a Divan set and a Divan drill for maximum mining fortune and mining speed. Get as many accessories as possible. Don't forget Diamond Outgotooth or Book of Stats at level 300. Also use Mole at at least level 171. For the method, we prefer wall over floor, but that's up to you. Hey, I'm Nameless Jew and I made a mod called Skather Pro. It's a mod developed for Scather farmers that helps with the grind and aims to make it more exciting. It automatically shows an overlay in the crystal hollows with a bunch of stats that are related to Scather farming. It also has several alerts, for example when spawning worms or Scathers, or a bedrock wall alert, or the Scather pet drop alert for when RNGs blesses you with that sweet pet drop. There's also a Scather chances command that lets you calculate specific drop chances with a certain magic find or pet lock value. I've also added some custom-made achievements for some extra motivation during your grind. You can configure the mod in the settings, which are accessible either using a button in Minecraft's vanilla options menu or using slash pro space settings. You can find the download link for the mod in the description if you want to use it. If you're into Scather farming, you might also want to join our Scather Farmer Discord. We have a very, very nice community of very friendly people we also have a question channel. If you have very specific questions about anything, feel free. Just ask the question channel. You don't have to ping us. We can read. We also have a channel for your pet drops, so you can flex your pet drops, your rank rolls, your bestiary rank rolls, magic fund rank rolls, and pet drop rolls, so everyone else can see how many pets you dropped. We also do have some community events from time to time. Not very often, but sometimes we do have them. We also have a written guide which covers most of the scale farming aspects as well. So feel free to join this good, the link is in the description. Merry Christmas and Happy Halloween. This is good job.
escapa, 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 escapa,